the June 2015 climate negotiations, IISD released a new approach for including the reform of fossil fuel subsidies in a country's INDC. IISD can help countries to include emissions reductions from subsidy reform within part of a package of measures to make up to an overall emissions reductions target. There's a big potential, I would say, on coupling FFSR to INDCs. It still remains to be seen. Uh, there's a new project financed by the Nordic Council of Ministers who is specifically looking at the link and, and, and particularly the, the translation of FSR into INDCs. I think the key value is if your plan is more aggressive, more viable and faster paced, you're going to attract a lot more investment. New models are available to quantify the true extent of fossil fuel subsidies. So the model is a tool which allows us to extract a database of fossil fuel subsidies for 170 countries from 1980 till essentially today. And it gives us a database that is comparable across countries, that uh, is consistent and captures a fi far broader measure of fossil fuel subsidies than what we've had so far. And so it's a crucial tool at helping us understand the extent and the impact of fossil fuel subsidies. We have a global subsidies initiative integrated fiscal model, the GSI IF model, which enables countries to measure the emissions reductions from subsidy removal, gives them the figures to put into their INDCs. It gives you sort of like a realistic perspective of how much um, CO2 we're emitting and how much less we can emit without these subsidies. The price gap approach, uh, the idea that you take a price of petrol at the pump and you compare it to some international benchmark has been the standard, uh, the gold standard in inferring or understanding fossil fuel subsidies. But many subsidies are indirect. Many subsidies don't show up in the prices of petrol at the pump. For example, countries with lots of localized oil give support or loans to drillers to purchase their equipment and to drill in particular sites. Those loans would not be picked up by the price gap approach. You know, my thinking is if you're able to visualize what the real hidden cost of those subsidies is and you can see the drag on the economy, then you can remove that distortion, remove the drag on the economy, and that way you get a more welcoming environment for low carbon development investment and better, stronger INDCs. You know, we looked at 20 countries with the GSI if model. On average, from fossil fuel subsidy removal alone, we get around 10% reductions by 2020, which is good. Obviously, it varies for different countries, but this, can, this figure can be increased. So emissions reductions can go down further if we use some of the savings that we make from subsidy when we put them into renewables, 10% to renewables, 20% to energy efficiency. And I see it as a win-win situation because at the same time they'll be reducing um, CO2 emissions, they'll be increasing their GDP and yes, getting rid of these subsidies that are a burden to their budgets. Morocco has reduced subsidies over time and also has good renewable energy targets and therefore by removing those subsidies it creates the fiscal space to be able to invest in more renewables moving forwards. The Fossil Fuel Subsidy Reform Group of Friends is uh, an alliance of countries that was born out of the G20 meeting in Pittsburgh in 2009 because that was where the G20 countries committed to at least be more transparent about their uh, fossil fuel subsidies. So basically we are lobbying the G20 countries to stay to their commitments. Since last summer, uh, when we uh, saw the agreement between US and China to do peer reviews of their subsidies, uh, more G20 countries seem willing to follow along. It's not a question of if subsidies should be removed, but how subsidies should be removed. The event showed that a new approach to INDCs, comprehensive data, and broadening political support provide a timely opportunity for the reform of fossil fuel subsidies.